Nintendo's home consoles often bring up lots of memories and great gaming experiences with people. And I thought today I'd do a fun video taking a look at all seven different consoles that Nintendo released, home consoles, and putting them in order from best to worst. The Immortal John Hancock here and with another video. If you're new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. So I got this idea from an article posted on Screen Rant, but the, the article was actually posted in a Facebook group that I often attend and it's uh, helped being ran by Josh Jacobson and it's the Greater Seattle Area Retro Gamers. It's a great Facebook group and got this idea from there and want to talk about uh, what I am going to put as the best Nintendo console and go from best to worst. Now you're gonna have your own opinions of these. It's okay, we can differ and still be friends. And so, uh, you know, this is just my opinion. Your opinion may be different. And so uh, I do want in the comments you to rank them yourself and put them from best to worst. Also, how I am looking at these, determining where they go on the list is the impact of this console on the industry, uh, both initial and long lasting, the popularity of the console and uh, the replayability and how well it holds up. And so is this something that I go back and play myself over and over again? And so first up, I have to go with Super Nintendo and go, oh, I'm a huge Super Nintendo fan, you know, and, and again, age and experience with some of these is gonna uh, determine how you put them in order. So number one for me is Super Nintendo. And there's so many timeless classics that were released on this console. And I really feel that it was an upgrade from the Nintendo Entertainment System. And so that 16-bit era, there were so many great classics. You know, first up, you know, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, just an amazing Zelda game. One of my favorites of all time. It blew me away back then and it just still holds up. Uh, another favorite, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. This is a great action platformer and the the graphics and sound in it are just just a good example of how how much the graphics involved from the NES to the Super Nintendo, and so you know, and then you got great RPGs like Chrono Trigger, and so uh, there the list could go on and on. You know, the Super Nintendo's library is just full of amazing games that really put it on the map, and I tr I truly believe it's it's a better upgrade to the Nintendo Entertainment System, which is still holds up and it's near and dear to my heart. Number two on this list is the Nintendo Entertainment System. I got to experience it firsthand, first renting it and eventually getting one in my household. And I could go on and on about my experiences and what I think, but I still think the NES's impact on the industry is huge. And you know, you still see games that try to mimic that NES graphics look. You know, I just did a video on Tecmo Super Bowl 2021 updated roster. And you know, Tecmo Super Bowl, I played that so many hours back in the day in middle school. That was just a, just a great experience. You know, ice hockey comes to mind. I know some people are fans of Blades of Steel, but you know, Going back to one of the very first NES games I ever played, and that was Castlevania. You know, I recently went back and played this. Man, that sound is, that music is so good. But, you know, you can't talk about the NES without bringing up Super Mario Brothers 3. And if you haven't played this, to me, it's a near-perfect Mario game and one of my favorites of all time. You know, seeing in the movie The Wizard for the first time, you know, the NES to many people is what they, what really got them into gaming. And, you know, the impact on the industry, you know, the industry was not doing well when the NES came out. A lot of people didn't think it would be around and it just had a huge impact for so many people. All right, next up, and something that, you know, really kind of surprised me over time, and that's the Switch. The Nintendo Switch really, to me, I think has, has made a lasting impact and really has done a great job at establishing itself one of the better Nintendo consoles to come out. I still think there's some things, there's some critics out there that may say there's a lot of ports, uh, that Joy-Con drift issue, as well as, you know, when it comes down to it, does Nintendo's first party games really match up to the other Nintendo consoles out there? You know, it's still producing games. It's in its 
going to be soon its fourth year of its existence. I still think it's establishing itself. And I think for entire generations, they're going to go and remember the Nintendo Switch as the console that they grew up with, the console they played the most. I have a close friend that really his favorite console for Nintendo probably was a Super Nintendo. He probably would say now that it's a Switch. And for many people out there, I think it has done an excellent job of establishing itself. I was a critic when it came out. I do think it has really done a good job. It's super popular, 75 million plus, and it's still climbing. I also think that it does a good job of representing lots of different types of games. It does a really good job of, of third party and indie games being represented on a Nintendo console. You know, Undertale comes to mind as an indie game that is fantastic to play on it. And then you got classics like Mario Rabbits, Kingdom Battle. That's a great classic and exclusive on the Nintendo Switch. And then you can't go wrong with Super Mario Odyssey. You also had you know, the amazing ports from the Wii U that were even better on the Switch. And so Switch is number three for me. Next up, now there's a big kind of debate. Do you go with popularity of the time or do you go with kind of the lasting impact? And so for me, I'm gonna go with Nintendo GameCube. I got a Nintendo GameCube on day one and didn't regret it. I still play it and there's still some amazing games on it that you really can't find anywhere else. And I think those are the games that people go back to. A lot of Nintendo consoles, you know, especially the ones that are more popular. Yes, there is, uh, with any popular console, you're gonna have shovelware. But the GameCube had a leaner and meaner kind of library. I think its library holds up more than some other Nintendo consoles that I haven't gotten to yet. But some of, some of my favorite, Eternal Darkness comes to mind as a great Nintendo GameCube uh, exclusive. Paper Mario, the, thou the, the Thousand Year Door is another one that's really good on the console. And my favorite on it of all time is Star Wars Rogue Leader. Star Wars Rogue Leader to me is the reason why I bought a Nintendo GameCube and I still go back and play it. I really wish they would remake that game or do a compilation of Factor 5 games. It is so needed, but still, it's great to go back and play Rogue Leader. All right. Next up, so what's after GameCube? GameCube number four, all right? So now we got the Wii, okay? Now the Wii, uh, for collectors out there, uh, the first thing that people come up with is they say there's a lot of shovelware. Yes, that is very true. The shovelware and library of the Wii, um, if you don't look and sift through some of that stuff, you're just gonna see a bunch of shovelware. But the top 5%, I would say the top 5% of the Wii is brilliant and fantastic, and it has a lot of first party Nintendo games that are well worth going back, okay? And so, you know, Wii Sports is definitely what put the, the Wii on the map. For a lot of casual gamers out there, I love Wii Sports. It's a fun game, and I have several family members that played it years past after the when the Wii came out. Uh, Metroid Prime Trilogy, you know, you have Super Mario Galaxy. That is a timeless classic. And even though with the motion controls, it actually works pretty good with that game. And then this game, which always gets overlooked, even for Zelda fans, and that's Skyward Sword. This is a brilliant Zelda game. I never did beat it. I got really far in it, and it's one that I definitely want to go back and revisit. But, you know, so, so many other games on the Wii, it's overwhelming how big its library was. But I do think that, uh, that the GameCube for me is a little bit better. So I put uh, the Wii at number five. All right, number six is Nintendo 64. Now, I am a big Nintendo 64 fan, but it has its problems. The problems range everywhere from the controller to kind of lasting impact. You know, I think that the N64 at the time was revolutionary. And I also do think that Nintendo since then has made better 3D games and games that have kind of surpassed this console. I think this, this console is remembered fondly and I know there's gonna be people out there that like it more than others. Now, that top 5%, the top 5, 10% of the N64 is brilliant. You know, I think of GoldenEye, amazing game. I think of Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This is, you know, probably the number one game that people still probably play with uh, Super Smash Brothers on the N64, and they have Super Mario 64 as well. Now, these games, while they have been ported 
over to other Nintendo consoles minus GoldenEye. You know, that's that's a game that still to this day is one of the better four-player uh, casual console shooters that is fun to play. Now, the graphics haven't aged well for the Nintendo 64. That 3D early polygon graphics is something that really kind of uh, took and divided Nintendo fans who were big fans of the Super Nintendo and that 2D sprites. You know, Nintendo 64 really went away from all of that and most of their games were polygon. For some people, it just didn't work. But for others who got to delve into the N64 library, it was pretty good. I would say, you know, definitely, I think we all can agree that that, that top tier N64 library was good. But I think there's other consoles that, that if you had a preference, you would probably play over the Nintendo 64. I'm still a huge fan of it, but it is number six on my list. And number seven on this list of seven consoles from best to worst is the Wii U. Now the Wii U suffered quite a bit of an identity issue when it came out. It did not do a good job of selling it as a unique console. I for one thought it was just an HD Wii when it came out and didn't bother picking one up. I got one later. Uh, my son definitely, uh, his early years, gamed quite a bit on it. And some of my favorites are Pikmin 3, um, Super Mario 3D World, which is soon to be on the Nintendo Switch with extra level, and Super Mario Maker, which is something my son played quite a bit. Now, those games, you know, essentially there was Super Mario Maker 2 on the Switch, and, you know, people would say, well, a lot of the great games are now ported to the Switch and are better versions. That is true. And I think it's small library, even though some of the first party games are excellent. I don't think, uh, you know, the, the Wii U will be remembered. I, I think the Switch is definitely going to re be remembered more vividly and fondly than the Wii U. Sales show it. Its library shows it. Um, even though I'm a fan of the Wii U, Honestly speaking, of the seven consoles today, it is the weakest and number seven. So that's it. What do you think? What is your list? I want you to put your list in the comments. I want to hear from you. And I am either there or near close to 100,000 as I post this video. I want to thank everybody for the ongoing support. I am super blessed. And thank you so much for everybody's comments and ongoing support of getting there. It has taken you to get me here, and I look forward to doing many more videos. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. If you're new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button if you like what you see, and click the bell for ongoing notifications as I'm uploading videos every week. Thank you so much. This was a fun video to do. This is the Immortal John Hancock, and you take care.